Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about how to be their number one. And this is a dating advice video. So if you are dating someone and, you know, usually when you first start dating someone, they're usually talking to a few other people. I had this when I was with my wife, like um, my wife was had also been on a few dates and I had also been on a few dates as well. Um, and in that time, that very the beginning time, we were still talking to those other dates. Um, so what, you know, how do you make someone your number one priority? How can you beat the competition, basically? So the way that you do this, essentially, right, and the best way that I, I've ever heard it, the best way that I can personally describe it myself as well, is you've got to be the person that is least affected um, by, by them, right? And what that means is, is you're not pursuing too much, you're not falling in love too soon, um, you're not confessing your feelings or anything like that. You're the, and basically, whatever they do, it's fine by you. So if you don't hear from them for a few days, it doesn't matter to you. If you do hear from, hear from them, then that's great as well. You know, you can get on with your life, whether or not you're in contact with this person or not. Right, and that's essentially what it means by you're the one that's least affected by them. And when you are on dates, you're not being too overly mushy, you're not being insecure, um, you're, when, when you're talking to this person, whatever they say doesn't affect you, because let's say they take a bit of a dig at you, they, they're testing you a little bit, because let's say you really believe in something, like you have a strong opinion about it, and that strong opinion just happens to come up in conversation when you're on a date. And let's say that person kind of tests you a little bit. The person you're on a date with kind of says to you, oh yeah, well, I don't believe in that. You know, that's really silly what you've just said. Or they say something like that. But you're strong and you'd be like, well, you can think whatever you want to think, but that's what I believe. You know, it's kind of like those little tests because most of the time um, when that kind of happens on a date, if someone is testing um, your opinion what most people do is they change their opinion. They're like, oh no, yeah, I don't really believe in that. Or yeah, I guess you're right. Or some, or they get angry and start arguing about it. But if you kind of just chill and you don't, whatever they said just didn't affect you and you're like, well, if you don't believe that, that's cool, but I'm going to believe what I want to believe, basically. You know, it's up to you what you, what you, what you want to think about. You know, if you, if you just have that kind of attitude that you don't care how they test you and you kind of see it as kind of like playful and cute like oh you tested me you know obviously you don't say that but you kind of have that essence of you know whatever you say is not going to affect me it's not going to make me feel moody it's not going to make me feel angry it's not going to make me feel upset it's not going to make me want to change my opinion because I'm scared of losing you you know <laughs> something like that you've got to behave like that like you're not affected by what they say by what they do by how often they message you it doesn't matter to you right because when they're on dates with other people and you want to become their number one most of the people in fact probably all of them right are going to be um, trying to make them fall in love with them and things like that you know so a story that I heard from my uh, wife when we had just first started dating and she'd been on a date with someone else um, like a few months into our relationship, you know, we was talking about this sort of thing, like, oh, who else was you dating when we got together and we was talking about that sort of thing. And she said to me, oh, yeah, I went on, a, I went to the cinema with this one girl and um, she was saying, like, how, like, not long after or on the date, I can't remember if it was after the date or on the date, the girl that my wife had been on a date with said, oh, I think you're really, really beautiful. I think you're really nice. Or they said, oh, I, it was like, oh, I really, really like you. That was on the first date the first date you know and that put my wife off it did it really put her off and that's why I managed to let's say beat the competition with that particular girl because I wasn't like that you know after me and my wife's first date it, I didn't um, message her again for another five days to ask her out on another date you know, I didn't have any contact with her whatsoever for five days. And that's what made me more interesting. That's what made me more more mysterious, uh, I guess you could say. Um, and it, may, it obviously appeared to my wife, it put an impression on her that I wasn't affected by her. I wasn't gushing over her or things like that, you know. Um, another example, um, this was, wasn't where me and my wife were dating, but this was like a, like a few months um before she met me she went on a date with a girl 
who, after that first day, sent her two bunches of flowers. Not just one bunch, but two bunches of flowers. Um, and then was like always messaging her, saying what went wrong, I thought you liked me, why are you speaking, you know, sending all these kinds of like really needy messages, right? And it's clear that um, they, they went on a date and that girl who went on a date with my wife just was absolutely smitten by her straight away. And you can't act like that. You've got to remain unaffected. You've got to remain cool. So one of the ways that you do that is by once you've been on a date with someone, um, if you don't hear from them first, then wait a week, wait five days like what I did before messaging them again to ask them out or calling them up to ask them out again. You know, go on a date once a week, right, with them. Arrange to set up a date with them once a week. And um, don't contact them that much in between dates, if at all, right? Um, try to remain mysterious, like you're busy, like you've got other things going on. And guess what? During that time, when I first met my wife, I was in between jobs, so I wasn't actually, I didn't really have that much time on my hands. I had, I had quite a lot of time on my hands, basically. Obviously, I was reading books and, you know, w working towards making this business and things like that. But essentially, um, you know, I had a lot of time on my hands, right? And I could have easily fell into that gap of, oh, um, I'm going to get, you know, getting emotional, thinking how great she is, you know, and it could have made me um, message her more than what I should have done. You know, because my wife, I personally think my wife is extremely, extremely beautiful. Obviously, she might not be everyone's cup of tea, but she was perfect for me. Um, she was 10 out of 10 in my book, right? So, you know, I, I, I could have easily slipped into that, you know, and sometimes I did think, oh, yeah, maybe I should message her. But then I remembered what I personally had learned in my own dating journey and thought, I know that's not going to work. I know that's not going to be helpful in this situation because we've only just been on one date, right? So you have to think of that, right? So if you only contact them to set up a date, what will happen, a date once a week, what will happen is she or he will come to realise that, oh, they're only reaching out to me once a week to meet up once a week. So I have to now reach out to them more so that we can see each other more because I'm actually starting to fall in love, I'm starting to miss them. You know, they might not actually think those things. They may just feel it. They may just feel an urge to reach out to you more. And that's what will happen. Whenever they reach out to you more, just arrange to hang out more basically right and then what happens is especially what happened with me and my wife is we would see each other once a week I think there was even a time where we saw each other once uh there was like a time when we saw, there was like a fortnight that went by where we didn't see each other um and then eventually what happened when she started to like me more um we started seeing each other more because she was reaching out to me more and then basically it turned into like uh, after like the first month or so of dating uh, we started seeing each other twice a week because we would hang out over the weekends. We would be together Saturday and Sunday. And then it got to a point around um, the, the four-month the four month mark where we, third or four-month mark, where we um, started seeing each other, not just on the weekends, but she would hang out with me on, the, on a Wednesday evening as well and I'd spend the night. You know, it, it just happened more and more. And then eventually it got to the point where we started living together. Yeah. So it's something that slowly happens over time, but but basically your job, if you want the, if them to be, if you want to be their number one priority, is to just talk to them once a week to set up that date, okay? And if they really like you, then they'll start eventually reaching out to you more. And if they don't like you, they will eventually just fizzle away, and you'll never hear from them. Like you'll reach out. Let's say you go on a date with them, you wait a few days. Let's say five days, like what I did, to ask them out again, and they may not reply to you. They, you may not get a, re a response from them, which you know is fine because obviously what happened there is they went on a date with you. They realised that they didn't have any feelings for you. They may even say to you they don't want to date you anymore, or no thank you, you know something like that. Or they may just ghost you, right? But you can't take it too personally because. Obviously, obviously, with, because so much small amount of time has gone by, they don't know you very well, right? But they can just tell by perhaps it's they're just not keen on the way you look. They're just not keen on perhaps your personality, which is fine because you're not going to be everybody's cup of tea, right? But this is a good process to basically find out the ones that really do like you and the ones that don't, okay? So that's why it's good to wait because... Um, you know, it shows like if someone really likes you, then basically their anticipation is going to build and they're going to be really excited about talking to you and going on another date with you. And if they don't like you, then you just won't hear from them again or they'll just say, no, I don't really want to continue dating you. And you got to remain unaffected by that, okay? 
So another thing is that when you're doing this sort of thing, you never want to be mean or cold, right? You've always got to be like, if you hear from them and they reach out to you, you never want to be, you know, cold or distant from them. You always got to be really happy and positive. And you're going to be like, oh, I can't wait to hang out with you again. I can't wait to see you. When are you free to hang out? You know, when are you free to go on another date? You know, you've always got to be happy and positive. Never be, I'm not saying that you should be cold or mean to them. You just got to give them space to think about you because all the other people that they're dating are going to be like filling in their DMs all the time. They're going to be acting desperate and needy, but you're the one that's not. You're the one that's always happy to hear from them. You're the one that reaches out to them only once a week and you're really cool. You're really laid back. You're not affected by them. You know, when you go out on a date, you know, you, you can have a good like, conversation. You have a good, good time and you're not affected by what they do you know you can't make they can't make you emotional basically you're just really stoic and still and you're having fun as well obviously um and having a good time and just enjoying yourself and whatever they do just doesn't affect you right so that's kind of like the uh, the mindset to have if you're trying to be someone's number one priority when it comes to dating um so i hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like coaching with me personally and you would like help then please go to www.christineloveridge.com thank you so much for watching and i shall talk to you again very soon goodbye